Hello again, it's Brian from exodashboardwidgets.com. Um, we had a message on the forum from, from Michael here who's saying, um, I'm trying to understand how you've set up the, the, the weekly drop down box on this spreadsheet. He's referring to this manufacturing key performance indicator dashboard. I'd like to use this feature. I'm in a database, I'm starting to develop. Could you explain the step by step procedure, please? Um, and as always, it's it's a lot easier to, to show you in a video than to try and um, uh, uh, write a load of uh, text. So uh, so here we go. Um, so Michael's referring to this um, dashboard over here, which is a uh, a manufacturing key performance indicator dashboard that you can download um, from the forum. Um, we've downloaded it here. And basically what this dashboard is doing, um, Michael's not particularly interested in how to configure um, some of these traffic light and, and, and dial widgets. Um, there's already a number of, of, um, of other videos that explain how to, do, how to do that. What he's interested in is this feature here that's used to, to pull data out of a database um, based on a Dropbox value. Um, do I mean Dropbox? Uh, Dropdown. And how it uses that to 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 feed the the individual widgets. Um, so, as we as we've said a number of um, times, how we like to set up these dashboards um, is with um, with different tabs um, to try and uh, separate the logic of the dashboard tab, this first tab, um, which is a graphical representation. Um, a configuration page um, which is similar to the layout but, but holds all of the configuration data for each one of the the traffic light and each one of the different widgets um, a calculations page which again is 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 set up in a similar configuration pattern um, but carries out all the different calculations um, for the widgets uh, on the actual dashboard page for example you can see here um, this traffic light calculation section um, performs all the calculations that show the individual individual traffic lights for that first widget. Um, there's a database, there's a fourth tab, and the fifth tab holds um, the entries for the for the drop down list. Um, if you're using any um, drop down lists within your widgets you need to provide um, data uh, for that widget. Um, now this database is slightly complex so um, Michael I'm going to refer you um, I'm, going to do, I'm going to do a couple of things in this tutorial I'm quickly going to refer you to another database which is a little bit easier um, to get your head around which is this um, health facility dashboard uh, database it's it's very very similar but there's just two key performance indicators um, so it, it's a lot easier to see what's going on. This manufacturing database has a lot of different key performance indicators. There's, for example, there's three traffic lights for, um, it's by week, it's by month, it's by year. Um, there's, um, there's all sorts of stuff going on. There's um, near misses or, or high potential safety events. There's number of first aid. Um, casualties. There's there's number of the the number that needed to be reported to um, to OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration in America. There's all sorts of things going on here, so it's a lot easier to just take a look at this simple version um, for uh, a health facility, which does exactly the same thing. You can see, okay, this is in January. You can see um, each of the different. Let's just turn this back on. You see each of the different health facilities, health facility B had 42.8 consultations per day, 40, health facility C had 25 um, consultations per day, health facility F had 30, an average 37.8 consultations per day in January, if we change this to March, again you can see how, you can see how these indicators um, are changing. Um, and this is exactly the same process. Here's a configuration page, just has two sets of um, configuration data. The calculation page just has two um, sets of calculation um, calculations. 
um, and then the database is is a lot easier and it's a lot easier to see as well how um, we use VLOOKUP um, which I'll explain in a minute how that pulls data out of the database based on the values here these values blue um, which are um, which come from the the, the drop-down lists um, so I think the best way to, to, to understand the um, the technology that's involved behind these um, these dashboards is to do an, do an example from scratch um, so we're going to build a very quick dashboard um, that has a drop-down list and has a database and um, has uh, a dashboard element a visual um, a visualization element um, so let's do that now let's um, start a brand new workbook so if we go file um, new blank workbook create um, now as I've, I've said a couple of times it's good to separate the the, the different logic um, steps so I'm going to create four tabs the first one will be the dashboard my dashboard the second one will be the configuration data my configuration data the third one will be the calculations my calculations the fourth one will be the database my database and the fifth one will be the data used to drive the the, the drop downs uh, my drop down drop down list data okay let's quickly talk about drop down lists um, let's just add for example um, some months let's start with January January so let's just give ourselves 12 months let's go down I'm dropping that down to December now if we wanted to make a drop down list that um, that offered these these options um, we need to come across the top on the ribbon so instead of home formulas data review go to developer and then go insert where there's this toolbox here insert there's form controls there's two sorts um, I prefer the F, uh, the active X controls um, the only reason I prefer those is they're scalable um, so they look a little bit prettier but it's a lot easier to do the to use the first set so let's go ahead and just put in a um, a combo box a drop down list and let's drag and drop across the top here um, now as you can see at the moment there's no values in this and that's because we need to configure it so if you hover over the new drop down list right click go to the bottom format control um, okay within the format control there's a couple of things that have come up there's the input range I'm going to select the red arrow on the end highlight January to December um, now the cell link is where it puts the data to um, so for the moment let's just drop that into uh, let's choose B, B19 on the bottom um, and that's all we have to do now when we click our drop down list we have January, February, March, April we have all of our options here we click uh, March it provides us with a value down here it's a little bit smaller isn't it? It's just a bigger of three which refers to the third item in the list if we pick July it gives us a seven which gives us the seventh item in the list July um, now what we're going to use is we're going to use this value here number seven to pull values out of a database um, okay so that's the first tab that is my drop down list the second database is going to be the the, the next step we're going to do is to define set up our database um, so I'm going to do a database um, based on weather weather in London in 2014 um, in my first column Jan January and let's just make up some uh, let's put here the first column average temperature in London temperature 
Um, and the second one, let's put average, can't spell average, rainfall. Um, I'm just going to wrap these. Okay, format cells, alignment, let's wrap the text, center them, drop this down a little bit. Okay. Okay, so let's make up some data. The average temperature in London in January um, is 5, 7, 3, 12, 13, okay, 43, impossible. Ah, the weather's got nice in June. There we are. We're in our 20s, 21, 25. Now we're getting colder. Back to 12. Back down to 1. Okay, the rainfall, I'm going to just use random values actually. Rand bracket bracket, um, that's times by 100. It's just an easier way to fill in a load of data. And let's put this as a number, one decimal place. There we go. So there's the rainfall in millimetres and the average temperature in London um, for 2014. Um, so now, based on the selection in our drop-down list, we want to start pulling out some numbers um, for July. So let's start to pull out some number over here. numbers over here. Let's, um, let's pull out the month from our database. Let's pull out the temperature, temperature, and let's pull out the um, rainfall. Gonna move that across here. And let's just make some squares that are ready over here. So we're going to pull out the name of the month, the temperature, and the rainfall. So how do we do that? We use a function called VLOOKUP, um, which is vertical lookup. Um, how does that work? Um, okay, there's there's basically four terms in it. Let's put it in now, equals v lookup. There's the lookup value, there's the array, there's the column index, and there's this entity on the end which is true or false. Do we want it to be an exact value or an approximative value? Um, okay, so before we do this, I need to put onto my database the values that we're looking up from 1 to 12. Equals that one plus one, which will basically be the key, the primary key of our database. Okay, there we are. So we have values one to twelve in our database on the left. Um, and how we've set up the database, the easiest way that it works with this method is to have um, each it, um, is to have what we're looking for. Um, on a single row in the in the database, and that way, using VLOOKUP, we can look up for, for for one value on the left hand side, and then we can read off all of the key performance indicators as columns um, going across. Um, okay, so let's start to fill in some data from this. Um, so we need the month. So that equals V lookup. This is our lookup value here, the seventh value. The table array is is this lot. Um, okay, let's put a column. We're looking for column one, and I'm going to put here false, false because we want an exact match. Um, okay, I should have put column two. Um, so now it's pulling in July. Let's make this a little bit a little bit bigger. So if I'm putting August, it's pulling in the eighth value is August. May is pulling in the fifth value. Now we need to do exactly the same thing for the temperature. Um, and in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same formula here, and I'm going to paste it in the next cell down. But instead of filling, pulling out the second column, which is the month, I'm going to pull off the third column, which is the temperature. Um, and I'm going to paste in here as well and pull off the fourth column which is the the rainfall. And let's just do that. Format that cell. So let's just... 
Okay, so in May it was 13 degrees and there was 80 millimeters of, uh, of rainfall. In July there was it was 20, 21 degrees um, and 51. So I'll go back to May and you can see it's pulling it's pulling out this data for us. November the temperature was four degrees down to December I think we put one for December. Yeah, one degree. Now this basically shows you how um, how we're pulling out the data from the database. Now in order to drive um, our widget all we need to do now is to link this data we have down here to a um, to a widget. 